and we'll see that you have on your screen, the trainer's screen, these bar graphs. This is your inhibit. This is your reward. And these will automatically set themselves to a manual level. And you can then change those as needed by clicking A to M or by dragging the bars up and down. You also have the control panel for the screen for the game over here. This button, the start button, is the one that you're going to click once you're ready to actually start the game. I usually let the session run for 20 or 30 seconds so that the targets get set or pretty close to it before I click the start to start the game. The options menu gives you essentially two things that you can set. One of them is the timer. You can leave this so that the client plays without a time. Uh, or I prefer to do maybe two minutes or three minutes at a time. So for two minutes, I would put 120 seconds in here. For three minutes, I'd put 180 seconds and so forth. I like to do that because then the client plays and gets close to finishing and then plays again and gets closer, plays again and gets closer. And when they're actually able to complete the game in three minutes, then you can move and see if they can do it in two and a half or two. The thresholds you shouldn't have to set very often. If you have a client who's really, really bouncing around with their uh, reward amplitude, whether it's beta or SMR or whatever you're rewarding, you may have to reset this. As you go lower with this number, it becomes easier to build houses. Currently, what happens is that the client has to keep his reward band above the target 100% of the time for one full second. 100%. That will allow him to build a house. If the client doesn't have the ability to do that very well, you might reset this to 80 and say, well, if you can keep it over for 80% of a second, then we'll let you build a house. I've had a few people where I've had to go as low as 60. But as a general rule, we want the client to be building houses. We don't want them to be building houses too fast or too easily. So you may make some adjustments here. After you've made an adjustment, you click the set button and then you can close the options. If you click this, it will show you the scores for the session. And you can do multiple segments within a session. And the help menu allows you to read about the game and find out how to use the various different elements of it, built right into this window. So let's take a look now at the other window. This is going to be the Instruments 1 window. This is the one that the client will be seeing. And the client has his game here. So let's go ahead and start the session. I'm going to be doing a playback. And I'll open a file. So when we click on play, we're going to see these two bars moving up and down. The one that says lower, which is up on top, is the one we want to keep down. That's going to control the water behind the dam. The one that says raise, which is the bottom one, that's going to be what helps us to build the houses. So we've gone now for about 20 seconds. I'm going to go back over to the other window, which would probably be on a separate screen, and click the Start button. And now we'll go back to Instruments 1.
the feedback is very slow like this, on the trainer screen, you might look here and see that this number is, we should click here on A to M, and that raises the bar a little bit, and click on A to M on this one. He's still not scoring very much. So we could go to the options and say, I want to set this to 80 instead of 60. Notice now that the water is starting to rise in the dam, the sky is getting dark, and we can hear the sound of it. Just completed three houses on this level, and the fourth one turned these three into a mansion. Now we have two more, and the next time we score one here, that will turn into a mansion. Depending how high the client is above the target, he, he puts his houses on different levels. Now I'm going to actually make the client go over the threshold to give us a flood. I'll drag this down. I actually have to do that on the other window. Here's where last time where the water was rising. So we'll go here and we'll drag this down some. Go back to the other window. Client staying very low. You see the down very, very low here. So if I drag it down a little bit further, close. So we can see here actually that even though I set the target down lower, that didn't cause the water to go over the dam. It was a lot of slow wave activity going up that caused the water to go over the dam. And we can see here that there's a lot of very slow activity here. So the idea of the game is to run for, this was about two minutes, and it's very possible that at the 80 scoring range, the 80 options number here, this client would have completed the whole town in two minutes if he hadn't gone over the top. Any questions about the game, uh, please let us know. And any comments, we'd love to hear them. Hope you enjoy it.